Hey everybody, this is Mike here from the MJ Amston Furniture Company and today I'm going to be making some shaker styled candle stands. Uh, if you watch my videos you've noticed in the past that we also made a shaker style candle sconce and these are a little bit different. The sconce hangs on the wall as the candle stands are actually made to go on a desk or on a table. It's going to be adjustable in height and it's going to use some techniques that I haven't uh, videoed yet. We also feel that these candle stands will be a real nice complementary product to our 100% beeswax candles which are also available on our website. The shakers originally put these on with a series of um, tacks that went around here. Usually uh, two, one on top of the other. Um, I use screws, in this case I use brass screws. I really wasn't um, too enthusiastic about using tacks to hold this together. So I tried the brass screws and I'm, I don't really like that look too much. I'm just going to can this and I'm going to design these um, my own way. I've got a way that I think will be faster and I think the lines will be cleaner and will last a lot longer and be more durable. Here is uh, some of the Vermont cherry I picked out to build the bases of the candle stands and I'm going to make five candle stands and believe it or not that's going to take up all of this lumber. <laughs> going to be quite the candle stands. Uh, yeah. Here is the, the bases that we need to begin with. I've cut them both to length, or well, width and thickness. And now I have to cut them to length. Uh, I need to cut these up. I need 10 pieces about 6 inches long. Well, there we are. I'll cut out uh, six by six by two and five eighths, um, and I cut an extra one extra pair just in case. Um, so all I have to do now, I got to line the grain on these blocks, make sure it's going the same way, and I have to glue two of these together. Now these bases are not really going to be as massive in the finished product as it appears that they are here. What I'm going to do is glue these together and these are going to get turned on the lathe. While these are gluing up, I'll set these aside and we'll turn our attention on to, uh, there's going to be a, a threaded dowel that's going to come out of here. So once these get put into the clamps, we'll turn our attention to the threaded dowel.
These base pieces that were glued up uh, about 24 hours ago now are ready to come out of the clamps. And I had mentioned that after I got these done, we were going to work on uh, the threaded dowels. But I decided before I move on to the threaded dowels, uh, I've got another component to this candle stand that I need to glue up first. Um, this is going to hold the actual candles. And I have a pattern made to cut the shape out. So before I work on the dowels and threading those, I'm going to glue these blocks up. And while those are gluing, we can turn our attention to the dowels. Well, I've got these all glued up. Well, we can set these aside now. Uh, we can start working on the dowels. Now, what I'm going to be using to thread these dowels is the Beal wood threader. Um, I've gone ahead and I made my adjustments, and I've got the threader all set up. And I also made a little test, uh, kind of like a knot part right here. And I, I threaded a little bit of this rod just to make sure that my setup is correct. And if you can see, I don't know that. That thread's in there. Pretty nice. I'm happy with that. So I guess we'll go ahead and we'll run these through the wood threader. Um, I marked the back side of these dowels with a little bit of blue tape. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss the mark. I don't want to thread beyond this point. And I also had to make a little handle. This will go on here and I'll tighten this up. This little hex nut. This would have been a lot easier if I'd had um, a wing nut to put on there, but I didn't have any in the shop. So, well, that'll work for now. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to use this dowel that I use for setup. I'll just get it started and it'll just follow through. And it'll start cutting again here. I've already ran this through a couple times, so it doesn't bother the threads at all as long as the router doesn't move. So I'll have to keep checking my, uh, my attachment points, make sure nothing loosens up with the vibration.
I think that does a pretty nice job. And I'll show you how I tap the hole here um, when I have to do them on the candle stands. That works pretty nice. So I'm going to go through now and um, I will thread all the rods that I need and then we'll move on to the next step. Here we have all the rods uh, or the dowels threaded. Um, now that that's done, I can turn my attention back to the uh, pieces that we glued up yesterday. The pieces I glued up yesterday and I gotta take these out of the clamps. I'm gonna cut this shape out. This is a, this is the shape that's gonna hold each candle holder and a threaded rod will go up through this and you'll be able to adjust the height by turning this up or down. Okay, now I'm gonna go through and trace this pattern out on all these pieces. Um, not only is this gonna be cut to this shape, it's also gonna have a little kind of a convex or concaved shape to it, whichever end you're looking at. And I'll also have to cut that out too. I need to drill a hole here for my uh, threaded dowels to come through. So that's going to be a lot easier to do this now before I get it all cut out. Because uh, right now it'll lay flat on the drill press. So the first thing I have to do is, well these are a one inch dowel. So I have to drill about a seven eighths inch hole through the center here. And then we will tap that for one inch threads. <laughs> 